Hello, my name is Brennan, and welcome to this tutorial on how to create a Valve Steam Machine case. Okay, so first off, before we get started, um, I want to show you what we ha what are we cr what we're creating exactly. This is actually the Alienware Steam Machine, and here is the Valve Steam Machine case. And I want to take a look at this right here. Okay, so um, as you can see, the basic modeling we'll have to do is there's a basic box shape on this area right here. Oh no, not that. Um, Java again. Um, basic box piece. This basic box piece, we will have to model um, these front pieces right here. There's little grooves that go in between each little circle, and there's US. There are USB ports as well. So um, that's just that's all we have for the front uh, piece right here. Of course, on the other side, there is the back, all the connections, all the outputs, um, everything like that. So there's a lot of detail, a lot more details on the back than there are in the front. So we will we will be doing the front, uh, which will be easy. So um, this part right here has a lot more details, as you can see on the side here. Has all of these little vents. Uh, it has a vent here and on top, from what it looks like, air vents for heat purposes when it heats up. Um, there's nice places to air out. Uh, and so we'll be creating the top piece there with circles and the side. This will all be one piece that goes over this other box piece here. So um, that's basically how we're going to do it. So let's get started. Um, start modeling the basic shape of the steam machine. Let's go into Blender. I'm using Blender 2.71 as you can see. So let's start off with a cube and just start modeling. The way I did this was I actually loaded in a different a separate image. Let me start the screencast keys. I loaded in a different image than the ones that I showed you right now because we need it's a lot easier to model when you have front facing Im images of whatever you're modeling so like orthographic views if you're using blender you you know what I mean a front facing straight on view which is perfect so basically just like this right here you have a perfectly front facing this is actually the newer version of st the steam machine from what I know it looks different um, as you can see there's just it's just different the um, the colors at least from what I can see here but it basically it's basically the same design just a little different from what I can see in this picture alright so let's begin by modeling this box piece right here this one separate piece we will actually just go into edit mode Let's let's just scale this cube down until it fits about the height dimensions of this. All right, so let's go into edit mode and select the vertices on the side and start moving up. And as you can see, I selected them, but I did not turn on the um, uh, link selection to visible, which means you can actually um, make it so that if you select that, it will make it so that you won't be able to select vertices behind like this I can only select the ones in front the ones that are in view so if I see these I can only so basically it just makes it transparent you can select through the object another vertice on the other side if you need to which comes in handy when you're doing things like this so let's go into front view turn off this option here and let's select let me make sure if it's turning off. Yes, we turn that off and we slide this to the side. Let's go ahead and do that with this these vertices as well. Just move them on the X axis. Hopefully I'm not going too fast for you. Let's see. You can also see there is a shadow. Oop, what is going on here? Selected group. Okay, there we go. Um, so you can see there's a shadow. I think I just pressed G twice. That's probably why. If you press G, or maybe I did Shift G. 
Okay, so, as you can see, there looks like a shadow below this, and that is because there is some sort of stand piece that goes underneath the box, the main box piece. So what we need to do is basically just, let's first, um, s s let's move this out, and we cannot exactly build this steam machine to precise dimensions, so we're going to have to estimate and just uh, basically look at the image and um, model it based off of what you see basically so as you can see here it looks like a square shape to me at least it looks like a square shape so we have to model it in a square shape so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to uh, make it square so what we can do is actually use the snapping option increment snapping and we can press GY and then hold down control and it will just snap to each blender unit. It's actually not going to snap perfectly, but I think that looks about right. The size compared to the image. I can't I couldn't find any reference images that were actually from top view, so I basically just have to go based off of um off of the image here. So Let's just go ahead and go into front view again. See what we have to do. Okay, so now we basically we we model the basic shape of this cube part, cube piece, or box piece. Now let's duplicate this box and move it down on the z-axis. And let's scale that down as well. Actually, do that in the vert in uh, vertice edit mode. Let's scale that down. S Z on the on the z-axis and let's move that back up we'll put it here right underneath this top box piece and scale it in as well um, just press S on the keyboard and scale it in and that probably looks looks about right something like that actually let's go ahead and switch our render to cycles render so that we have it set up for later on when we do the materials. For this tutorial, we will not be doing materials as well, um, just to let you know. Um, this will get pretty long, so this can get pretty long, just doing the modeling, because there's a lot of little details. So, there we go. We did the little stand piece down there. From what I can see, it looks like it's just one piece all along, so it looks something like that. Okay, now let's go ahead and start modeling the top piece that goes over this. This is the basic box shape, and now we are going to model the other piece that goes over this. As you can see, we have we've modeled the other piece, the box piece, box shape, which is very sharp from what it looks like in there. And now we are going to model the uh, other piece, which is very sh smooth and rounded. Let's go ahead and add another cube. And let's move it over here, scale it down, just match this image here, scale it down till it's about the same thickness there, about that thick, and just move it up against this other piece here, box piece. Okay, now let's grab this, these top vertices and move them up on the z-axis. Now let's extrude them again and extrude them again on the x-axis and we are going to create a, uh, a mirror modifier we're going to use a mod mirror modifier to mirror this side on the onto the other side so let's go ahead and use the origin point of this object we'll just select it in edit mode and press shift Shift S on the keyboard and select cur cursor to selected and press tab to go back into object mode. Press Control Shift Alt C on the keyboard and then select origin to 3D cursor. Okay, so now let's go ahead and go to the modifiers tab, as you might call it, and let's select mirror. And we need to mirror this on the see oh yes the origin point is down there 
we do not want it to be down there because it will only end up mirroring it on that side. So let's um, select, let's, um, well, we can also do it in the options menu over here, as you can see. You can select um, set origin. Geometry to origin is what we want. So we want, actually, we want the origin to 3D cursor. So we want that origin point to move to the 3D cursor, which is this little uh, crosshair looking thing. Let's select origin to 3D cursor. And there we go. Let's snap to the center. And as soon as we set the, we want it to mirror on the x axis. So there we go. It's mirrored on the x axis. Let's go back into front view. And let's merge these together by selecting clipping and make sure merge is set to on or checked in the box. Okay, so let's move these together, make sure they're all the way together, sticking together. And let's select this right here. It looks like I didn't put it all the way touching this other piece, box piece, which it actually is. But it looks like there was a little shadow there on the image. But I think that might just be because it's close to it, and usually there's shadows anyway, so here we go. Um, let's turn on vertex snapping. Change the snap element to vertex snapping, and just hold down control, or you can just turn on this magnet. But I find it better to use control because you actually have control. Makes sense. All right. There we go. We modeled two, the two basic pieces. All we need to do now is match the shape to um, its actual scale. So um, let's make it a lot longer. Let's go into top view to make sure it's centered right on that point, or just kind of. It doesn't have to be perfect. Let's now scale it on the y-axis. So let's move this out. I pressed S and then Y on the keyboard. I don't know why it's not showing up on the screencast. Y. Okay, it doesn't show up. So anyway, just press Y on the keyboard. I think I just messed up the mesh there. Okay, S, Y on the keyboard. And let's keep scaling it out till it's about the right size. Or we could actually just select one of these either sides and snap it to the front and the back of this steam machine case. There we go. And now if you look at the image, the reference images, you can see that it's overlapping. You can see a little shadow there from the overlapping. And even here, you can see that it overlaps a little bit. Um, yeah, you can see a little bit of overlap, overlap there. So it goes forward uh, pretty much not too far but not too just a little bit so let's go ahead and do that and the front side is right here so let's select these front facing vertices and let's move them forward on the y-axis a little bit there we go that's about right looks about right Alright, so here we go. Let's move this camera so we can set it up for rendering. I'm going to set it at an angle, just like in the pictures, or basically like in the pictures, because um, if you put it at this angle, you can see all the details from the front. You can see the top, most of the details at least, because um, when we start to do the details in the back, uh, we won't really be able to render it all at once, or we won't, I should say, because there's no way to put the camera around the back and the front, unless you're doing something like a panorama or something. I don't, I don't think that's possible, though. Um, or a 360 render, you could render multiple Im images of this. So, anyway, let's get back to this. You would be able to render the side grooves for the air vent there, and the top, and all the front details. So, let's um, get back to work now let us add a subsurf modifier or subdivision surface as it's now called and we need to add vertices because this is really not working um, the subsurf modifier needs to go actually needs to stay below the mirror modifier but it looks like these aren't 
Looks like there's actually a face in between, so we need to select the face and then delete the face. There we go. So now it's looking better. And it's overlapping there. Looks like there might be some more faces in here. So let's select the face here, I believe. And make sure, let's delete faces. Okay, no face there. Let's do it here as well. Delete faces, okay. So there we go. Let's add two edge loops here. So basically you just press Control R on the keyboard, scroll with your wheel one time. Let me see if that's correct. Yeah, that's it said on the screencast that I scrolled it twice, but probably just okay. So uh, control R, scroll once, and then left click where you want to place them, and then let's scale them on the Y axis opposite ways. Okay, so we created that piece. Let's go ahead and add two edge loops, one here and one here. Let's um, press Control E on the keyboard. We can do edge slide. That's actually one possible way to do this. Or we can just grab it on the um, x-axis, this piece right here, and move it along the x-axis till it's about that close to the other vertices. And then for this one, we can um, grab it and move it up on the z-axis. There we go. Just make it about the same distance from that piece there, from that corner piece. Okay, so it looks like it's looking flat. So we need to make smooth the edges. Let's go ahead and do that. Select this piece, make sure it's selected. And select smooth for the shading. And, excuse me, let's go ahead and add an edge loop here. And let's move that down to about there. Let's make sure it looks like there's another vertice. Okay, there's no vertices down there. I mean, no edge loop. There's only, this is the first edge loop we made. And let's make two edge loops here. And two edge loops here, just for the sake of vertices. We need vertices there. Okay. Well, we actually don't really need them right now because we are going to do the grooves. So we'll need them when we're doing the grooves. So let me go ahead and just take those edge loops off. I'm sorry. Um, okay, so the front side, I need to remember which side is the front because I get confused. Especially when doing this. Okay, I think this side shouldn't be the same as the front. I don't think it is. It's not overlapping. Yeah, okay. It's probably good like that because then you can tell the difference between the front and the back. Okay, so this is the front, as you can see. Let's smooth out these edges here. We only need to do it on one side, of course, because we have a mirror modifier. Let's select the vertice in front view. Let's go into uh, vertex select. Let's select the vertices. And let's move these inward so that it smooths out that edge a little bit. Should kind of match that image there. So now it's looking really nice. And yeah, it's looking really nice. OK. So we're pretty much finished with the basic modeling of the valve steam machine case and um, yeah in the next tutorial we will get into more detailed um, modeling of each piece uh, each of the, the vents and the front piece and the back piece as well and then a separate tutorial I will have I will have a separate tutorial where we just do them we work on the materials so we'll focus on everything one at a time um, each piece one at a time so the basic modeling, the detailed modeling, and then the materials. So, thank you for watching. My name is Brennan. I'll see you in the next tutorial.